The truth is, you've been set up to fail, and this is how we got here. You see, it all began in 1996, when retail access to the foreign exchange markets became widespread, thanks to the internet and advancements in technology, allowing everyday people like me and you to trade currencies in seconds from anywhere in the world. See, prior to the rollout of web-based trading platforms, Forex trading was confined purely to the big institutional players. There was no access to margin, no retail brokers, and no web trading applications that we could use to trade currencies. So it was reserved only for financial institutions. But the internet changed all of that. It allowed normal people to get involved in the markets at any time from anywhere without the need for millions of dollars to cover trades. And with the new accessibility brought about by web trading and the opportunity that many see to make a career in the markets, millions have flocked to Forex since. An estimated 10 million people trade Forex today. But there's one big problem. 85% of retail traders never make money trading, and an even smaller percentage, close to 5%, will ever turn it into a career. And since retail trading began, it's never been any different. There's always been an overwhelming ratio of losers to winners. Sadly, 9 out of 10 people that step into the markets will step back out one day with nothing to show for their time, effort and sacrifice other than a huge financial loss. And it's a harsh truth, but that's the reality of trading. The consistent failure of almost every retail trader that steps into the market begs the question. Why even give the public access to trade and speculate in the markets in the first place? Why not just keep Forex reserved for financial institutions? If 85% of retail traders lose money, shouldn't the powers that be safeguard people from this losing game? Well, the answer is simple. The game is rigged in favor of the big players. The money that you lose as a retail trader flows upstream and ends up in the pockets of the big institutional players. And to fully understand how this works, we must first dive into the Forex food chain so that you can understand the flow of money and how it directly affects you. At the very top of the food chain resides the interbank market, commercial banks and central banks. Commercial banks facilitate more Forex transactions than any other player by a long shot. Deutsche Bank, HSBC, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, just to name a few. To put into perspective just how big these players are, Deutsche Bank alone was responsible for twice the trading volume of the entire 10 million person retail market in 2022. Their impact is huge, and they have another name that you might have already heard, market makers. Commercial banks or market makers provide the liquidity that allows the market to run. In other words, they bring huge amounts of money and they facilitate the link between buyers and sellers. Generally, in order to buy an asset, you need someone to sell it to you on the other side. But that doesn't always mean there has to be an individual retail trader who's selling at the same level as you. This is where the market makers step in. Market makers will take on your transaction at the market price, allowing you to enter the market practically anywhere and then offload that position at a later date to a trader on the other side. And of course, for this reason of being able to buy and sell instantly at almost any time of day, market makers are great. But there's another side to the commercial banks, and that's how they make their money. By far the biggest money maker for commercial banks and market makers is spread. Have you ever noticed when you enter a trade, you're entered automatically at a loss? This is because the market maker that hosts your trade is going to take one to five pips as their fee. That's where spread comes from. Every single time a trade is executed in the markets, the market maker gets paid. They set you up to lose from the get-go by entering your position at a loss, and they do not care whether you win or lose. So for them, the more people that trade, the more money that they can make. Every new order is money in the bank for them. They do not have your best interests in mind, and they see you as a dollar sign. And this isn't the only way that they make money. Market makers will also capitalize off your money risk-free. Let's say you want to buy $100,000 worth of USD JPY at 145. The market maker will offer you an entry at 145.05. This five pip spread is their instant profit for hosting the trade. But if the market maker believes price will move down more, they'll hold some of your $100,000 and buy at a lower price. If the market moves down to 144.5, 50 pips below your entry, they could then fill your $100,000 buy at 144.5 and pocket the 55 pip spread for themselves. And if the market moves upwards and into profit for you, they can close the position at or below 145.05 and still fill the transaction with a small profit or at a minimum, no loss. The five pip spread that you pay them becomes their risk buffer so they can profit off your money while you hold all the risk. 
With one simple transaction on your end, the market maker gets paid and gets a risk-free opportunity to make more money without bearing any risk. Now, this leads us on to the next big players, brokers. Brokers host our trades. Without them, we couldn't get into or out of positions. They essentially act as a middleman between the trader and the market maker. Though it's important to note that some brokers act as retail market makers themselves. Brokers make money in a variety of ways. The most simple being charging spreads and commissions. But there's another hidden way that brokers make money. And that's by playing the odds against the trader. See, when you enter a trade, the broker is automatically set up on the opposite side of your position. If you buy $100,000 worth of an asset, your broker will automatically be on the sell side with $100,000 of that asset. And now they have two options. Option one, they can offload the risk to a third party, and this is the A book. And option two, they can hold the risk and trade against you. And this is what we call the B book. In most instances, knowing that 85% of retail traders fail, the brokers will hold you in the B book and they will trade directly against your positions. So if you bought $100,000 of an asset and you end up having to sell it back for a loss at $98,000, that $2,000 that you lost is the profit that the broker will make. Here, they simply operate like a casino with a house edge. On some trades, they'll win, on others, they'll lose. But over time, knowing that the majority of traders will lose money puts them at an advantage because if they just do the opposite to everyone, they over time will make money thanks to that edge. In this sense, it's a rigged system and it's almost impossible for the broker to lose. They'll send the order through to the interbank market, to the commercial banks that we spoke about earlier. This is the A book and they'll simply offer your position so that someone else can trade against you and bear the risk. So let's recap. Market makers get paid every time we get into a trade, and they also get a risk-free shot to use your money to make money for themselves. And brokers trade directly against us and make money when we lose. We also have to pay them a spread to cover the entries for the trades. And in some cases, if sending through to the interbank market, we'll also have to pay a commission. Already, you can see how the game is set up to take money from the little guy and give it to the big guys at the top. But when we go further down the rabbit hole, you'll see that this is not all. Big players, prop firms, and even some shady trading influencers all play a role in rigging the system against retail traders even more. Market manipulation is a controversial topic. Many people have a twisted perception that the institutions are targeting retail stop losses purely as an evil ploy to take money away from you. And while it is true that stop losses are ran by the bigger institutional players, it's not as malicious as it seems on the surface. The truth is, institutions are trading with billions of dollars, and entering trades of multi-million or billion dollar magnitude requires a lot of liquidity. If I want to buy $1 billion worth of an asset, I need $1 billion worth of assets available to be sold to me. And individual retail traders are trading in the thousands, the tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands, not the multi-millions and billions. So if I were to place a billion dollar order into the market, it would quite literally manipulate the price because while trying to fill that trade, the demand would send the price up and people would charge me more for the asset, therefore causing a spike in the price. This is going to give me a terrible average price and a poor positioning on the trade. So the only way to get into this multi-million or billion dollar trade without moving the market and getting a terrible entry is to free up liquidity, which we can find in the form of stop losses. Because when 10,000 retail trader buy stop losses are hit, they have to sell the assets back to the market at a loss. I can then get my full size buy position on by buying their depreciated assets from them at a lower price. So institutional will hold off any buying until the market reaches a prime level where stop losses are situated. And when these stops are hit, that is where institutional can get their big executions on. And these are the big moves we see that really drive the market. This is why we see the market wick through lows and highs before reversing, seemingly stopping you out and then running away without you. The push through support and resistance levels triggers stops and that's actually what provides the liquidity and the momentum for the market to make its big moves. But how do they know where your stop loss is? Well, one word, predictability. Most traders use the same concepts in the same way. So the areas where lots of people are buying or selling become very obvious to the big players in the game. For example, they know there's going to be a huge influx of buying at a support so they know below that support, there's gonna be a lot of stop losses waiting. 
So rather than buying from an area of support, if institution wants to buy, they're going to wait for price to dip below that level and then use that stop loss liquidity of the retail traders to get into their big positions. And manipulation of the markets happens every single day. It's not some crooked trick used to make you lose all your money. It's just an essential component that allows the big players to get into the market. But that does not mean that you're safe and it doesn't mean that you're not going to lose money as a result of their manipulation. It once again sets traders up to fail. And while we know that market makers, brokers and institutional traders are taking advantage of retail in every possible way to line their own pockets, with commissions, spreads, counter trading and manipulation, they are unfortunately not the only participants profiting off of our downfall. To most, prop firms are a beacon of hope sent down from the heavens to provide a massive opportunity for traders who don't have large amounts of money. And while the opportunity that they provide can be life-changing by giving you access to large trading capital, there's a truly dark side to these firms. In fact, misusing prop firms can be the most damaging thing that you can do to your finances and the progress of your trading career. Why? Because they sap your energy, they sap your focus, and they sap your money feeding you a dream and selling you services that they know will not work for you over and over and over again. You see, contrary to the information that's out there and what most people think about prop firms, they don't make the majority of their money from successful traders. They actually make most of their income by taking sign-up fees from losers. Now, of course, this is a generalization and there will be some prop firms that do things the right way. But with the boom of the prop firm industry in recent years, most firms are bad actors. And in most cases, the best case scenario for a prop firm looks like this. You purchase an evaluation for $100 to $2,000. You fail your evaluation, they pocket the money, you're out of luck. They win, you lose. And then they market this dream to you again so that you'll buy another one, and another one, and another one. Much like a broker, they play the game of probabilities. They know that the majority of retail traders are going to lose. So if they can sell as many funding challenges as possible to retail traders, they know that the majority of them are simply going to be a paycheck. And the traders who do slip through the net and make money with the firm will be paid out with a small portion of the retail traders' losses collected as sign-up fees. So they can honor the payout of the winners and then keep tens or hundreds of millions of dollars for themselves. And don't get me wrong, some prop firms are great and they do things the right way. Some prop firms are considerably less shady than others. But generally, the business model stands true. They win the most when you lose, just like market makers, brokers, institutional traders, and funds. And yes, when you're a successful trader, prop firms are excellent, but you must understand that you will never fund your way to success. If you can't trade now, you're not going to trade any better just because you have $100,000 of capital. And all you're achieving by buying another prop firm challenge is making yourself a little bit more broke and wasting some more time. Now, at this point, it might seem like everyone's against you. Brokers, prop firms, and market makers rinsing your account with their fees, sapping your focus, your time, and your energy, and causing you endless losses via market manipulation. It seems they're all profiteering off of your hardships, but sadly, they're not the only ones. We also need to consider trading influencers. Influencers, mentors, signal providers, and educators. Just like brokers, prop firms, and actually everything else in life, there's good ones and there's bad ones. I know a few great traders who have mentored hundreds or even thousands to independent success. But unfortunately, I know many more who are fake, who cannot trade, cannot teach, and make their living stealing content, repackaging and selling it as their own, while making shady deals with brokers that are designed to set you up for failure once again so that they can get paid. To line the pockets of those that you trust with the money that they've subliminally taken from you under the guise of help. Let's talk about broker deals. As we've discussed, brokers love losing traders. A losing trader who brings $1,000 to the platform is just a $1,000 paycheck in the eyes of the broker. It's that simple. So brokers will pay handsomely to bring new inexperienced traders into their ecosystem. When a trader who's been invited to the brokerage places a certain amount of trades, the influencer will get paid, usually between $500 and $1,000, or sometimes on a revenue share model, where they actually get paid a percentage of the spreads taken by their traders. And this is why when you see free course or free signals, just sign up with my broker, you should run as far and fast as possible. All the influencer wants you to do is trade as big as possible, as fast as possible. 
because the faster that you meet the broker quota, the faster the influencer is going to get paid. Now, why is this a problem? It's a problem because it creates a conflict of interest. If the influencer teaches you how to trade properly and teaches you good risk management, your position sizes are going to be small and it's going to take a while for you to reach the broker's quota, which means the influencer will take longer to get paid. If they can encourage you to trade big, they will get paid fast, no matter the outcome of you losing all your money. They don't care. The influencers and brokers are teaming up to make you lose so that they can get paid. And if you think that's bad, it gets a whole lot worse. These broker deals get even darker. Many brokers will offer influencers marketing accounts, demo accounts marked as live accounts that can be manipulated to falsify profits. Many influencers with these broker deals will fake their profits and market a lifestyle to draw in new inexperienced traders. And unfortunately, humans are drawn by greed. So when they see an influencer making tens of thousands of dollars every single day, driving around in their Lamborghini with their diamond watches on, people buy into the dream, sign up with the broker and voila, they lose their money and the broker and the influencer gets paid. How do I know that these deals exist? Because I've been offered them. Every week I get emails from brokers trying to get me to join them as a partner. And some of the shadier firms have offered me these marketing accounts in these emails. I've personally never accepted a broker deal. And in fact, to this day, I've turned down millions of dollars worth of profit that I could have made by exploiting my audience. But I've got morals and ethics, and I believe reputation stands true in the long term. And to me, being able to sleep at night knowing I haven't scammed tens of thousands of people is more important than making a few million dollars in the short term. But unfortunately, not everyone has compassion. A sickening amount of people will take advantage of the people that trust them just to get paid. And these sleazy scammers are not the only people we need to worry about. There's another huge problem in the trading education space. Misinformation. See, even many of the educators who think they're helping are subliminally hurting their audience by misguiding them on what really matters. Social media has led traders to believe that charts and technical analysis are the only important thing in trading. And if you have a good chart strategy, that's it, you're automatically successful. In reality, this couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, it's important to have a technical edge because without one, you're doomed to endlessly grind down your account until there's no money left. However, your technical edge is only one part of the larger trading puzzle. And it's every other piece that's missing from 90% of mentorships, courses, and YouTube tutorials. Mental framing, how you view the markets, your expectations and understanding of what successful trading really looks like and what targets you can realistically achieve over a long time horizon. Money management and contingency plans, the mechanical strategies for keeping hold of your money and escaping sour trades before they wipe you out. Backtesting, studying and strategy validation. How you actually bring all components together and master a strategy in order to build a working concept for live trading. And journaling, reviewing and refining. How you track your trades and learn from every win and every loss to ensure continued learning, improvement and progress. There's so much more to trading than just charts. And it's all but ignored by the majority of educators. If your mind isn't wired to win, no chart pattern will ever save you. So the world is against you. Market makers exploit you for profit by using your own money against you. Brokers trade directly against you and profit when you lose. The markets are manipulated day in and day out, invalidating your strategies and killing your technical edge. Prop firms want to sell you a dream and capitalize off your downfall. And hundreds or thousands of BS trading influencers are setting up shady deals with brokers to bring you in, chew you up and spit you out for their own financial gain. Even many of the mentors who think they're doing good work are misguiding you with a lack of information and skewed expectations of what really matters. And on top of this, trading is pure competition. The fire doesn't only come from above, but every retail trader active in the market is in direct competition with you. You only win when someone else loses. And when you lose, someone else is taking that money from you. Trading is a ruthless game and only the best survive. And look, I know you've done everything right. You've learned a strategy and you've done everything that you should do in order to succeed, but still it's not working. And the problem is you're following the conventional trading journey. You're focusing on charts. You're rushing to the money. 
and you're taking the same actions as everyone else. And that is exactly the problem. See, most people lose endlessly. So if you do the same as everyone else, you too are doomed to fail. And until you break free of the conventional habits, frameworks and focuses of the 90%, you will be stuck in the endless cycle of losses. Is this it? Are you doomed to fail? Surely with the whole world against you, there's no chance of ever succeeding. When you've done all the right things and it's still not working out. Well, not exactly. Statistically, the odds are against you. And most of you watching this video will never adapt, never rewire your mind, and as a result, never become a career trader. You'll continue along the conventional trading path, following in the footsteps of millions of other losers. But for those who are willing to reform a new perception and adapt to the principles of a winning trader, there's still hope. Listen, if you feel like you've put a lot of work into your studies and you've done everything that you need to do to become a winner, but you're still losing, that's why. Your perception of trading and success is all wrong. You've been conditioned to believe that charts alone are the answer to your success, when really there's so much stacked against you that you have to think deeper and work harder to overcome the odds. And it's only when you realize this that you can start to achieve success in trading. Listen, if success in your trading and a career in the industry is what you aspire for, then you should be asking yourself, how do I create this new level of success in my own work? And the good news here is, the path that you need to walk in order to become successful has been walked before, thousands of times. The traits, characteristics and principles that you need to develop have been tried and tested over many years. The truth about success, what it looks like, how to get it, await you. And I have the answers. And I'm going to share them with you, so that you can reshape the way that you see reality, overcome the odds and conquer the markets to build your own personal path to prosperity. But not today, you're not ready yet. Because the truth and the principles that I want to share with you will only work if you apply the information that I've shared with you today. You will only put in the work if you understand how serious this is. And you'll only develop the right perception by understanding how twisted the trading landscape is. And the principles will only work for you if you make a personal commitment to yourself. So first, I need to ask you a crucial question. Why do you really think you're losing? Is it really because you don't have the holy grail technical confluence? Do you truly believe that watching another YouTube tutorial on technical analysis is going to give you the missing piece you need to become a successful trader? Or do you think, in reality, the problem goes a lot deeper than that? Could it be the misdirection that you've suffered? Your misunderstanding of market manipulation? The lack of focus, study and development on important topics? The traps set for you by brokers, influencers and prop firms that sap your time, energy, focus and money. The unrealistic expectations of 20% a month or more set by the social trading scene. Your inability to remain patient with a system. Your total lack of inner confidence and constant search for external validation. Think about it. I need you to dwell on this question. Reflect upon your journey up to this point. What do you think it is that's holding you back? And where do your biggest failures come from? The answers that you pull from within yourself will mark the start of a dramatic change in your trading journey. And I have a few more questions for you to ask yourself. And you can find those inside of the Telegram group for the truth. And when you've taken the time to find the answers within your mind and planted the foundations towards your transformation on Thursday, 3 p.m. UK time, I'm going to reveal the secret trading principles that you can use to conquer 2024 and reach trading prosperity. So make sure you mark your calendar and I'll see you on Thursday to uncover the truth. <laughs>